Good morning and I hope you're well. I'm in Orkney today, enjoying the wide open spaces of these green and fertile islands. Today's reading is from 2 Chronicles 26 and tells the story of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Alath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jechaliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jabne and Ashdod. He then rebuilt towns near Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabs who lived in Gerbal and against the Moyanites. The Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah, and his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt, because he had become very powerful. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle of the wall, and he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness, and dug many cisterns, because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plain. He had people working his fields and vineyards in the hills, and in the fertile lands, for he loved the soil. Uzziah had a well-trained army, ready to go out by divisions according to their numbers, as mustered by Jael, the secretary, and Masiah, the officer under the direction of Hananiah, one of the royal officials. The total number of family leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. Under their command was an army of 307,500 men, trained for war, a powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of armour, bows and sling stones for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made devices, invented for use on the towers and on the corner defences, so that soldiers should could shoot arrows and hurl large stones from the walls. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped until he became powerful. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah the priest, with eighty other courageous priests of the Lord, followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you will not be honoured by the Lord God. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. While he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave, because the Lord had afflicted him. King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous, and banned from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. The first part of the day's reading tells of a good king, Uzziah, but quite early on there is a hint of what may happen. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. This is conditional. And as we read on, we found out that after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. The familiar saying, pride comes before a fall, 
is based on Proverbs 16, verse 18. It's amazing how many common sayings come either from the Bible or Shakespeare, and Isaiah is a perfect example of pride comes before a fall. Isaiah went into the temple to burn incense, a role reserved for the priests as he must have known, and he earned not just their wrath, but that of the Lord as well, as he was struck down with leprosy. It's a salutary tale, however we take it. But does God really strike people down with disease for going against him? That's not how we understand things nowadays. Or maybe the priests punished Uzziah somehow and claimed that they were doing God's will. They wouldn't be the first or the last to do that. But we do believe that our actions have consequences. Whatever the circumstances of Uzziah contracting leprosy, it put him out of action for the rest of his life, and his son Jotham had to take over, effectively, as regent. Have you read the novel The Island by Victoria Hislop? It's a novel based on the leper colony island of Spinalonga off Crete, where lepers were isolated until they died. The island was used as a leper colony from 1903 to 1957. We read of leprosy in the Gospels, and when I read this book I was amazed to learn that leper colonies were still active in Europe in my lifetime. Even today, every two minutes, someone is diagnosed with leprosy. That's more than 200,000 new cases a year. Although it's curable, millions of people worldwide are living with the effects of the disease, from physical disability to mental health problems, poverty and, of course, discrimination. And it remains a significant issue in the world. And now let us pray. It seems appropriate to start with a prayer from the leprosy mission. Lord, we lay before you those affected by leprosy. We pray that you would be with them and bring peace and comfort to them as they face trials, frustrations and feeling of loneliness and isolation. Draw near to them, comfort them and fill them with a sense of your closeness. Lord, when there seems to be no way forward or when there seems to be a sea of need, we pray you will make the impossible possible and create a way. Amen. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. Today I'm using a prayer produced by the Scottish Church Leaders Forum. Living God, creator and giver of life to all people, we ask that you would hear our prayer for peace amongst the nations and for ending a conflict in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, who shall judge between the nations, we ask that you would lead the nations in the paths of peace and that the dividing wall of hostility would be broken down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, who has inspired faith across the ages, grant peace in the midst of war and bring harmony to the commonwealth of nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, who gave his only Son that we might have life, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit and inspire in us hope that peace will be renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe, and remember, Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.